Next, you say, lighten up. You know, half the time we worry about things that don't even happen anyway. How, how many have ever worried about something that didn't happen? Don't you hate that? How many still got a headache? Yeah, because your body, here's the thing, your physiology, your body still goes through all the same processes as if it did happen. Your blood pressure goes up, you get the headache, your stomach hurts, all those things. Even though it doesn't happen, the bad thing is it happened to you. Here's the bad thing, if it really does happen, now you got to go through it twice. That's why the Bible says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. We get all worried about things that don't even happen. Kind of, kind of reminds me of, have you ever had a situation like that? You thought it was going to turn out this way, and it turned out completely different than you thought. I mean, know what I'm talking about. Like a, a guy sits down on a park bench. He, he looks over, and he notices there's a nun sitting next to him on the park bench. He says, excuse me, sister. He says, I don't know if this is just a coincidence that you're here and I'm here. He said, but I've got to tell you, I've had a dream my entire life. I've always wanted to kiss a nun. Yeah. My goodness, the nun looked, looked at him and said, are you crazy? I'm a nun. I can't even believe you just asked me that. He said, you know what? You're sorry. I'm sorry. I should have probably never asked you. Please forgive me. I I'm sorry. He turned around. The nun said, well, hold on a minute. I mean, if it is your dream <laughs> and I'm here, I'd like to help. He said, I would be willing to kiss you on two conditions. She said, I would be willing to kiss you on two conditions. Number one, you got to be Catholic. He said, that's perfect. I'm Catholic. said, so number two, got to be single. He said, I'm single. The nun said, okay, fine. So he laid a big one around on the nun. As soon as he gets done kissing the nun, he starts laughing. The nun said, what's so funny? He said, i got to admit, I lied to you. He said, I'm actually Baptist. <laughs> he said, and I'm married. All of a sudden, the nun started laughing. He said, what do you think so funny? The nun said, actually, my name is Kevin. <laughs> and I, I was just on my way to a costume party. So, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Sometimes in life, things turn out different than you thought they were going to turn out. But be a good cheer. He said, I've already overcome the world. Life is a gift. Life is a gift. How many like getting gifts? How many like getting gifts? Yeah, how many like giving gifts? Yeah, we love gifts. Life is a, is a gift. A gift's meant to be unwrapped. It's meant to be enjoyed. A couple of uh, months ago was our anniversary, my wife and I's anniversary, and she woke up that morning. She goes, honey, you know, today's our anniversary. I said, yeah, I know. She said, I had a dream last night that you bought me a diamond necklace. <laughs> what do you think it means? <laughs> I don't know. But you know what? Maybe if you go to dinner with me tonight, you're going to find out what it means. She got all excited. So we got dressed up, went to a nice dinner, and I gave her a gift. And then she ripped the paper off that thing, and it was a, a book on the meaning of dreams. <laughs> so I don't know if that, I hope that helps her. Because uh, I myself had no clue what that meant. But uh, here's the thing life is, like, life is a gift. And what I love about this gift called life is God picked out the gift just for you. That's why none of us are alike. I'm not you, you're not me. The other day someone said, Dave, you and me, man, we're just alike. I said, you know, if you and me are just alike, one of us is unnecessary. <laughs> I'm going with you. Um, none of us are alike. I can't be you. I can't be Pastor Jim. Man, do I wish I, I dream that I preach like Pastor Jim. And then I get down, I tell Christian, I'm like, I sound like Pastor Jim. Well, I preach hard, didn't it? She goes, no, not really. <laughs> I'm like, I felt like I preached good like that. I'm here to thank you. You got one of the best preachers in all the world. Oh, I think if I could just preach half that good, and I would wear socks though. But if I did, I would, if I could just preach half that good, it would be, it'd be worth it. Man, you could preach good. And, and Pastor Don, you guys are so blessed to have pastors like these that love you and want the best for you. And, and uh, we're just honored to call you guys friends. Thanks for letting us hang out this weekend. My wife, she's a good preacher too. She's over here. Stand up there and we'll see you. Say hello. <laughs> is there a microphone around here? I want Solomon to come up here real quick. Solomon, come up here. This is my little boy, Solomon. I want him to, I want him to come up here real quick and say hello to you. Um, this is my, my little boy. He's nine years old. He's going to be a preacher one day. So I'm just here for him. Uh, 
And, uh, and so it's so good because a lot of times, you know, she's preaching somewhere, I'm preaching somewhere. We don't all get to be together. So we get to be home together. Do you want to um, say hello to everybody or, or say anything? Hi. Powerful. <laughs> anything else you want to say? A joke. You want to tell a joke? Okay, tell a joke. You know any jokes? Yeah, yeah. Who's that? Impatient chicken. Impatient <laughs> chicken. <laughs> right, Where's a bunny's favorite place to hang out? Where is a bunny's favorite place to hang out? Tell me. I have. <laughs>